wollte etwas Eigenes kreieren, das Leute sofort als einen Rizzi erkennen. They would it as a Rizzi right away. Auch in der VIP-Lounge im Frankfurter Flughafen spielt James Rizzi eine Rolle. Und zu diesem Motiv habe ich eine ganz besonders persönliche Beziehung. Das ist das Logo des Spendenmarathons. James Rizzi hat es gemacht aus New York. Leider kann ich das Bild nicht mitnehmen, aber vielleicht etwas anderes von James Rizzi nach New York. Rizzi war ein begeisterter Radfahrer in New York und genau dahin bringen wir jetzt das Fahrrad von James Rizzi zurück. So, Mosche, habt ihr was für euch? Bringen wir das nicht an Bord? Danke. Wir sehen uns in New York. Welche Stadt könnte einen Künstler mehr inspirieren als diese? 1950 wurde James Rizzi hier geboren und arbeitete bis zu seinem Tod in dieser Millionenmetropole. Andere würden sich jetzt in Helikopter setzen, um Ihnen die Stadt vorzustellen. Wir suchen James Rizzis Motive auf James Rizzis Fahrrad. Die Brooklyn Bridge ist eines der beliebtesten Motive von James Rizzi. Sie steht für den Brückenschlag seiner Kindheit in Brooklyn und seiner großen Karriere in Manhattan. Like a bridge over troubled water. Ich engagierte mich in vielen Demonstrationen, insbesondere in Anti-Vietnam-Protesten und wurde ein richtiger Hippie. Ich wollte etwas Eigenes kreieren, das Leute sofort als einen Rizzi erkennen. Mr. 
This is the bike that Jimmy rode all around. And he has it yeah. in his loft? He had it in his loft and he rode it when I first met him he was riding this bike. And yeah. you had a bike too? I had a bike, I had a pink bike. Okay. Yeah, we rode around together. And I haven't seen this this bike in years. You remember the horn? I do, I do. Ah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. That's, That's hilarious, saying. thank you. He is an artist, but there was nothing about him that suggested artist. He was like he was kind of like a tough kid from Brooklyn, a New Yorker um, that stumbled upon art, and and I would say that was him. There was nothing. He, he was um, he was like remember the movie Saturday Night Fever, Tony Manero. That was more like him. Without the, the disco dancing and the nightclub, it was more punk then. <laughs> but but that was him. He was a you know he was a Brooklyn boy. Ray's Pizza is uh, right around the corner. Jimmy would always go there and get a slice or two. Uh, he loved cupcakes. On Prince Street, a cupcake right. shop opened up, and Dean and DeLuca is right around the corner. And he would go to Dean and DeLuca all the time. Jimmy spent a lot of money there over the years. This is where Jimmy lived. We and you lived. I, we both lived, yeah. Um, and Jimmy was uh, there for 20 years building. He lived up here on the fifth floor. It was a very big loft. Was it more a, a living space or more a working place? Both. Both. He lived and worked. He had a work studio um, and he lived. It was, it was everything. I mean, he spent a lot of time at home. In New York City, most people live in very tiny places and Jimmy moved from a very tiny place. So we both moved into this very big loft. So that in itself was fantastic. Um, and it was so big that you you could be completely separate. So he had a, a work area, a very big work area that he could work in, but he also had a drawing table that was set up in front of the TV. So he would just sketch while watching his sports, and, you know, and then he would go back and do his painting, he would, and then he'd go back to his desk. So if you're looking for a sign of James Rizzi, um, here's one in cement. What is that? Uh, well, it, it looks like uh, he, he drew a lot of um, couples kissing, a lot of lovers. So. Is, this, is this Gabby? Is this you? I don't remember. Um, I don't, there were many Gabbies, so <laughs> I don't know. It could be, it could not be. What was his relationship to the establishment? He stayed in his world. He was in his world. He was like an outsider artist. And uh, he would do his drawing. He, would, he, he, he was not interested in what was going on. He was interested in his world, which was drawing what... It, it was, it, you, can't even, you don't even know what he was going to draw. He would just sit down and draw. And he was interested in, in sports. He was interested in music. And he was interested in, in his friends. Goldfinger, he's the man, the man with the mightiest touch, a spider's touch. Auch das eine von James Rizzi inspirierte 3D Grafik. Das ist allerdings die Kopie der Kopie der Kopie.
Hier auf den Stufen des Metropolitan Museum of Art hat James Rizzi versucht, seine Kunst zu verkaufen. Das war kurz nachdem er vom Studium in Florida zurück nach New York kam. Er sagt ihm, da drin hängt ganz tolle Kunst an den Wänden. Aber wenn ihr zu Hause auch tolle Kunst an euren Wänden haben wollt, dann kauft meine Kunst. Er wurde immer wieder von Sicherheitskräften vertrieben. Und wenn er da hinten auf der rechten Seite verscheucht wurde, kam er auf der linken zurück. Sein großer Traum war, einmal selbst in diesem Museum zu hängen. Doch dieser Traum ging nie in Erfüllung. I've been, I've actually been here like about 10, 12 years. All right. Yeah, yeah. You still love it? Oh man, I love being out here. The people are great. You get to meet people from all over the world. I mean like 85% of the people that buy my work are from like either Germany, Australia, um, down east, Singapore. I mean, it's great. You and you still love to work on the street? I love it, I love it. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. If they offer you to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, you would change? Maybe. I think I will. So, so a lot of famous people around the corner here. Oh yeah. Heard about Sean Penn is living here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the superstar here. Yeah. The real superstar. <laughs> I mean, I love painting the subways, but we can't paint them no more. It's no more. There you go. Have you ever been arrested? Oh, forget about it. You went too quick. <laughs> <laughs> too many times. Das ist eins meiner persönlichen Lieblingsmotive von James Rizzi, der Blick über den Central Park auf die Skyline von Manhattan. Als Kind war er oft mit seinen Eltern hier und später, so sagt er, waren die schönsten Momente für ihn in New York, im Central Park. Die großen Gratiskonzerte, die es auch heute noch gibt. Damals liebte er vor allen Dingen Simon und Garfunkel. James Rizzi, eine heiße Inspiration, waren die Hotdog-Stände in der ganzen Stadt, natürlich auch hier im Central Park. So I'm looking for a fancy car. You must be Bill Rizzi. Uh, yes, I am. I'm Wolfgang. Well, nice to meet Hi, you. Nice to meet you too. This car fits to my hat here. Yes, <laughs> it's a similar color. <laughs> so tell me something about this crazy car. Well, this was my brother's. Is it a piece of art or does it still drive? It still drives fine. Would you care for a ride? All right, great. That's it. <laughs> He was very confident too, that, that he would be successful, but my parents had had second thoughts because at that time nobody really believed that you could make a, a good li living as an artist yeah. uh, during those times. He said to my, I remember saying to my parents that, Mom, Dad, I'm going to make it. This is what I love doing. Making just 
two copies of the same print and we would cut out one and, and, and put double faced tape on a specific piece at different levels to uh, show the 3D effect. And what was important was the cutting of the, the cutting of the each piece where you could not really make a mistake. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, that, and that's what brought it being very attractive. But that was a very accurate work, yes? Yes, it was very, it was very intricate. There was no room for mistakes, so you had to be very careful in cutting and also taping so you didn't see the tape over a specific piece. And also the level of, of certain pieces had to be higher than others. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to So, Bill, this is a very special place for you here. Huh? Yes, it is. I spent a lot of time here. And now you're back for the first time since 9-11? Yes, the first, first uh, time here at the Freedom Tower. It's, it's quite amazing. In Tower? In Tower 1. And at first we thought it was a small plane that hit. Everybody was very calm uh, until we got out of the tower. And the security people were very good as far as getting people out quick, which I felt saved a lot of lives because they were very, uh, very efficient uh, in their jobs and knowing how serious everything was. So we walked quite fast up West Street and uh, I wound up at my, my brother's place. And when I got there, uh, he was out looking for me. And about 20 minutes later, he was coming down the block and we hugged and we were so glad to see each other. Uh, spent the night there at his place and, and uh, made me feel so good that I was safe. Which role uh, did this tragedy play in his artwork? Well, we did a print of all the ones we lost, but we wanted to give it a little more of an uplift and, and just try to continue his, his way of, of, of looking at the bright side of things. and. Uh, it, it was a print that uh, just made people feel good like all his other prints. Now he's the one we lost. He's gone to sue. December, two years ago, right now. What was your first impression when you heard your brother die? I was shocked. At first I didn't believe it. And then reality set in and it was uh, a tragic loss. Because we were so close. He was so close with our family, and it was just something that we will always we will always miss him. And what is his message to the world? To keep smiling. 